fantastic. Um, for those of you who don't know me, it could be a few. My name's Josh. I'm the fourth member of the TDP team, um, and I'll be kind of chairing this this part of the day. Um, this uh, session is focusing on some of the work that the TDP uh, and more widely uh, Museum of London Archaeology are doing um, w alongside Tideway. Uh, there will be more information about exactly what Tideway do uh, through some of the presentations. So I won't go into a full kind of explanation of it, but it is, uh, although there's no one uh, from Tideway here at the moment, uh, we just uh, like to say thank you to Tideway for supporting uh, the Thames Discovery Programme. Uh, they fund my post, um, so I'm very grateful for them. Um, uh, but also, uh, there's a, you know, they've been incredibly supportive of the work of the Thames Discovery Programme, so we just like to, even though they're not here, uh, they couldn't be with us in person, we'd like to thank them uh, for what they've been doing. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about for about the next 20 minutes or so is some of the work that, that I've been doing as a result of funding from Tideway. Uh, which is to work with younger audiences. Um, so whilst Helen is working with older Londoners, uh, I'm working with the younger ones. Um, I'm the person who, who fits the kind of you should never work with children or animals. I, unfortunately, it's my day job. Um, so I'll be explaining a little bit about what I've been doing uh, and a little bit about what we're hoping to do uh, in the coming year. Um, so the work... That TDP and Tideway are doing is part of the wider uh, work that MOLA is undertaking um, on behalf of Tideway. We're halfway through uh, a two-year uh, funding period and we're working to uh, implement something called the Tideway Heritage Interpretation Scheme, which is basically how, as a project, Tideway view uh, heritage and how they view uh, kind of getting that heritage uh, out to the general public. And I'm part of that. Uh, so, what have we been doing? Um, we've been engaging with primary schools and secondary schools uh, by delivering uh, sessions uh, with them, both on the foreshore and in the classroom. Uh, we've been running uh, what we're calling a tadpoles group, uh, tadpole sessions, which are sessions with younger with children, getting them engaged in the archaeology of the foreshore, and seen as our adult volunteers are called frogs. Tadpole seems the most uh, logical name to give our, our young, those younger people getting involved. Uh, we've also been running uh, family walks. We've run three family walks over this year. Uh, but we've also been putting on a series of lectures uh, and community uh, workshops uh, across the year, which I know many of you have come along to and got involved with. Uh, Helen briefly mentioned them in her, her presentation earlier. And they've been a really great success in engaging uh, people with the kind of stuff that, that we're, we're doing. So schools. Uh, my background is as a primary school teacher, so this is perhaps where I feel most comfortable, uh, whereas most people feel uncomfortable doing stuff with kids. It's kind of my bread and butter, really. Um, so we've worked with seven schools in total this year, uh, and that's been in 13 individual sessions uh, and two whole school assemblies. Um, so put that, to put that into context, an uh, um, uh, individual session is about, with about a group of about 30 kids um, and the adults associated with that class, whereas a whole school assembly has been as many as 500 children in one room. Uh, I'm not quite sure which I find more daunting yet. I think it's probably the, the assemblies, because you, when you've got 500 uh, young eyes looking up to you, um, they, they, they know when you're kind of making stuff up. Um, but... In total, we've engaged with, with well over 1,000 uh, school children over this year, which has been a fantastic number. Um, and they've been from schools ranging from, from Barnes uh, in the west right through to Bermondsey uh, in the east. So we've, had, we've kind of been able to go across London uh, with what we're offering. Uh, the picture you can see on, the, on, on your right, my left, um, is taken just across the river. This is a class, uh, we were very lucky uh, to get permit, special permission from Historic Royal Palaces to go down onto the Tower Foreshore, where, as James said, you're not normally allowed to go. And we were able to take uh, five classes down onto the Tower Foreshore for a very short um, uh, wander around to look at some of the things you can find. One day was particularly short, we were only down there 20 minutes because it started to rain. 
Um, and whilst adults can kind of be a bit hardy in the rain, uh, with children it very quickly descends into chaos. So we made the decision to get off the foreshore uh, and go into the bridge where it was a bit warmer. Um, there we are, you can just see that kind of clump of people and, and I'm the one in the high-vis vest, if you can just about see it. Uh, so we had a great setting uh, to be able to take uh, the kids down uh, onto the foreshore in front of a World Heritage site is pretty cool. Uh, I'm not quite sure they understood the gravity of it being a World Heritage site, but it's a fantastic place. They all know what the Tower of London is, uh, so to, to take them there is, is uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is a picture from one of uh, our link schools with Tideway. I was able to go in to do an assembly, uh, and in br at break time I, was, I went out with some of our finds and was very quickly surrounded um, by a bunch of kids wanting to know what things were. Um, and as part of our work um, across on, on the Tower Beach, the kids uh, had a look at the, what the, some of the things they'd found. They were allowed to take one item off. Uh, to look at more closely and work out where it kind of fitted in in the general um, timeline of things. So this particular child has managed to accurately date his bit of pottery and is having a quick draw of it. Um, the other thing uh, that we've been able to do, as I said before, is, is the tadpoles. Uh, we've run six tadpole events uh, across three different sites at Trig Lane, um, at Putney and at Deptford. Um, it's been a... What we've did was we did a, a mixture of kind of uh, getting the kids to record the archaeology in a traditional way uh, using paper recording so to speak but we've also made a really good um, use of, of the Citizen app um, which has been absolutely fantastic because if you give children a bit of technology these days they know exactly what to do with it straight away um, it might be harder for some of us older people to kind of get our heads around technology but kids these days are really clued in uh, to how it works so it's been absolutely fantastic uh, to see how uh, it works. It's also involved a lot of me squinting at various objects and making funny faces, as you can see from some of the, uh, the photos. We were a we've been able to uh, engage with 37 children uh, and 16 adults. Adults love to come along to these events uh, over the course uh, of the year. We're looking uh, next year to really uh, shake up the way we do this, and I'll talk a bit about that uh, in a minute. Uh, I love this, this bottom post uh, picture. This is, this is as, as the kids described to me, a prehistoric wheelie chair. Uh, so unfortunately now that's entered the records on the Citizen app, so it's official now. Um, uh, so hopefully we can work on a kind of official kind of typology of prehistoric wheelie chairs in the coming years. Um, but th th this is the kind of thing that we've been doing with some of the young people we've taken down. Uh, Community events. We've been Tideway a bit, with the funding that we've got from Tideway. We've been very lucky that we've been able to run a series of lectures um, and community workshops. The aim is to run four of each over the year. Uh, we've run two lectures so far and th uh, two community events. We've got, as Nat said, we've got two more of each, one more of each coming up before the end of this year. Uh, so we've run. Two, the two le the lectures uh, have been delivered by Elliot and myself. You won't be surprised that Elliot delivered one on shipbuilding, shipbreaking. Um, and we also had one that I delivered on crime and punishment. Uh, the workshops have been really great because it's been a great way to encourage uh, uh, our frogs and the wider community to look at some of the different ways we do archaeology. So we had um, a research skills workshop that was very well attended. I know some of, those, some of you came to that. Uh, which is looking at different ways to research the archaeology we're finding. We also had one on 3D modelling, which is really great because it's a practical skill that, that our volunteers can use out on the foreshore. Uh, and we've had uh, 110 people come to our, our lectures. Uh, we've had 70 at our, our workshop. So we're hoping we can get uh, some really good numbers coming off of that as, as the next couple of um, events happen. <laughs> This is an alternative view of the picture you saw from Helen earlier uh, of, the, uh, of the research skills workshop. And it was really great because we had a real mixture of both uh, volunteers. We had some members of the shared learning group coming along to that. And we had some other members of the public. And it was a really great way to mix up some groups, but, and, but to get people thinking about how they do research and what they want to research. So hopefully we'll see some 
Uh, you've seen some of the outcomes of that uh, today. Hopefully some more will, will come out in due course. Um, the other great thing about this year has been we've done a huge amount of collaboration with other uh, people. Uh, the picture there is of uh, our, my molar colleague Alan Pipe, who uh, is an animal bone expert. Basically, if you give Alan a, a bone, he could probably tell you uh, what animal it came from, how old that animal was, and potentially how it died, just by looking at it. He's, he's absolutely fantastic. And this was on one of our family walks at Deptford. Um, so we've been able to uh, collaborate with our, our MOLA and Citizen colleagues. Uh, we've been able to, you know, have a look at the, the different ways we do things and what different uh, expertise we can bring into the events that we run. And that's been absolutely fantastic. When we did, uh, when we did the Beaches and Bridges event, uh, which was the, the Tower Beach uh, sessions, we worked with uh, colleagues uh, at Tower Bridge in their education department, but also uh, our MOLA colleague, uh, Ashley, who runs the time truck. And we basically had three sessions in one day, which is quite crazy, really. But we put, it, it came together really well, and it showed actually how well uh, collaboration whilst working with, with young people can work really well to create a day that they really enjoy. Uh, and we've also worked with the National Maritime Museum uh, kind of this time last year. Um, when it was getting towards our conference, I was going out to Deptford uh, in the cold uh, with a colleague from the National Maritime Museum putting together some stuff to do with, with a school uh, there. And this is, this is it's great when you can go to work and this is the view you get. Um, this is uh, the... That if you can see just about, you can see me standing on the time truck wearing a Thames Discovery Programme t-shirt. Um, but we were able to have the time truck out open on Potter's Fields. The kids would go to the, the foreshore, they'd have a session in the bridge, and then they'd have a session on the truck. So they had a full day out of school, but doing archaeology, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and as Helen said, feedback is absolutely brilliant to get, and we've had some really great feedback um, over the year. It's always great. Uh, the, the one at the bottom uh, was from a school that we worked in in Barnes. Uh, and the, I got, when I got back to the office after delivering the assembly, the teacher, got, uh, the head of history at the school, had emailed me and said that one of his teachers had completely thrown out his lesson plan that day because all the kids wanted to talk about was the assembly, which is a great compliment. Um, but it also shows the, the real interest that the kids have for archaeology out there so it's it's definitely a, a thing that they're into so it's definitely a thing we need to keep pushing in but it's been a really we've had a really uh, fantastic year with some really fantastic feedback I could read all that but it's probably a bit probably a bit boring but we've had some great uh, feedback uh, so what does the coming year look like this is this is the exciting bit but also the daunting bit for me because it's what I've got to do when I get back to the office on Monday uh, it's, it's great being able to share with you guys what I'm doing but the reality is when I get back to the office, I've got that, you know, there's still stuff, there's still a lot that we're working on. Um, so we're continuing with our uh, schools work. We're particularly emphasising our work in secondary schools. So if you know any secondary schools that would love uh, an archaeologist to come in and talk to them on the foreshore, let me know because we'd love to come and do stuff with you. Uh, we're looking uh, to publish uh, some learning resources on the TDP website. So keep an eye out for those. That's very exciting. We've been, de been developing those over the summer. Uh, we are going to continue with our lectures and our workshops over the coming year. Uh, <laughs> so that's very exciting. Obviously, with uh, it being the ninth year of TDP this year, we're looking forward to our tenth year next year. Um, so there's some exciting ideas we've got for uh, lectures in. And then we've got our, new, our relaunched tadpoles group and this is something that's really exciting for me because I think this could be really really great um, oh wrong way um, we rather than having events spread out across London as we've had this year our new tadpoles group is going to be uh, focused on one site which is the custom house foreshore which is just across the river from here um, and by being on one site the, the, the hope is that the kids will have a real ownership over a site that they can say they work on regularly. They'll get training in the kind of same kind of skills that our frogs do, planning, photography, finds identification. They'll be, get a chance to visit other TDP sites to see what our adult frogs are doing, 
so that we hope we so we can develop a kind of cohesion between our, our adult frogs and our tadpoles. Uh, they'll be working uh, to complete a foreshore qualification, just like our adult frogs do. We're hoping to use the the skills passport that's already in use as a kind of model for this. Uh, and this is my hope. Hopefully, uh, in 2018, it won't be me standing up here telling you about what we've been doing. It will be some of the tadpoles. Um, we have a very high age demographic, even though I'm probably at the lower end of it. Uh, so I think my, my kind of aim, my kind of dream, is that, that in the, a year's time, there'll be a couple of kids up here telling you about what they've learned about archaeology and about the foreshore, rather than me. So that's what that's hope. That's 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 our kind of uh, uh, hope for, for next year. If you are interested, or you you think you know a young person who'd be interested in doing this, uh, then we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you would like to leave uh, your details with someone, Magnus, who's waving now, will happily take your email address um, during the coffee break later. Uh, and if you want to get in touch with me, if you, if you drop me an email, we'd love to hear from you. So, oh, wrong way again. Uh, so that's the year that we've, we've had and looking forward to the year we've got. So thank you. <laughs>